Welcome back y'all, this is Darian in Tech, and this is where we're talking about how I became a technical product manager with no degree. All right, so to start out, I guess it probably helps if we preface what a technical product manager actually does. The product manager basically leads products or leads features, and what I mean by lead is pretty much everything from conceptualization to architecture to writing the technical specs, understanding the impact that the feature or the product will have on the business, the metrics behind that for the business, like what makes it worth doing. They do a lot of discovery with customers or in the market, or they do a lot of user discovery as well. And pretty much just make sure that the things that developers are doing are actually serving the business value, that they're actually solving problems, people are using the features, they're being adopted, and that's essentially the role of the product manager. Now, a technical product manager, you could pretty much imagine does all those things with just a technical focus. So my job, pretty much having a software engineering background is to work really closely with the developers and improve our entire team quality of life in a lot of ways. Whether that's communication flow from the business to developers, whether that's improving our documentation strategy, how we write our tickets or our processes around how developers get help or support, a lot of data metrics and analytics from you know, our actual product. So a lot of measuring things, measuring the impact of things and getting really into the metrics and the analytics of all the products and tools in our company and pretty much with a focus on the ones that my two teams actually work on. But I do pretty much all the same stuff as a product manager, just with a, a really heavy emphasis on the technical side. So I have a lot of really in-depth conversations with senior developers, we architect a lot of solutions, we talk through and brainstorm a lot of different things about how we wanna approach a problem or how we wanna go about solving something, potentially the impact of architecting something this way versus that way, and pretty much just navigate those conversations all the way through the development or the developers having what they need to begin development and seeing it through to production. I know that was a lot. I mean, that's kind of what these roles are. I mean, when you, when you get to project management, product management, they really depend and change based on what organization you're in, how you work, how your scrum processes and agile processes are. So uh, I'm kind of just giving you a, a rundown of my responsibilities so far, and I'm still new to my role, so I'm settling in. I know things are gonna pick up and change a little bit, but for the most part, that's kind of like a high level of what I do. With that, how did I get into this role, especially without coming from like a computer science background or having a degree, even like business or a master's degree, which I think a lot of people think that they do need an MBA or something like that to break into product. And I'm not saying that it wouldn't be helpful, um, but I am living proof that you don't necessarily need it. So I'm gonna talk about the things that I did to kind of get here and yeah, we'll go from there. But the one thing that helped me out a lot is 100% having software engineering experience. Um, I cannot underestimate how important that is. Not to say that I couldn't have still gotten this job without having the engineering experience, but Honestly, it set me apart from every other candidate applying for this role. And I say that specifically because I actually had to code as a part of my interview, even though I'm a technical product manager. That's what I mean by you can still be very, very involved in technical things, just depending on what type of company you're at. So I still have to write an API as part of my actual interview process. And I also had to do a lot of solution architecture diagrams and things like that and solve problems and show that I could I could do that in a way that, that made sense in a document. So I don't think I would have been able to do that as effectively if I hadn't have worked as a software engineer for the past three and a half years. All those things came from being involved in rather like intermediate, I'll say, dev projects that were not a part of a course, a tutorial, anything like that, but actually working with other developers, other people and trying to build things or even working on my own, but trying to challenge myself to build things that were challenging. So when I say software engineering experience, I mean three years of not only working professionally in a job, but also on my own in my free time, doing a lot of different startups, business ideas, and really just pushing myself to build applications. The next thing that helped me out a lot, like I said uh, in the previous point, is product experience, product and startup experience specifically. That being said, I did have a tech startup uh, for about five years, it was education based. And essentially we were trying to solve the problem of group projects. So kids in high school hated doing group projects because you know everybody gets the same grade. So even if you do all the work in the project and you're like the group leader, you get the same grade as everybody else. 
So the company I was running that I founded was trying to solve that problem or build an app that would solve that problem. And I did that, like I said, for five years, all the way through the point where like I raised money, I got users, um, we even did a Guinness World Record attempt uh, in the state of Michigan with, with the product. So, you know, I didn't make any money um, and it was five years of my life where, you know, you never really knew like what, what you were after, like obviously, as a founder, you, you want to sell your company or see it grow or, you know, IPO or whatever. But when you're really in it and just trying to make everything happen and I didn't have a team and you don't really know much, it was just a lot of grinding. Like I was just grinding, just doing a lot of work because I didn't really know what I was trying to do. I knew what the problem was, I knew the problem I was trying to solve, but I knew I cared a lot about solving it. And I, I, would, I would do pretty much anything to figure out how to get this in the hands of students and teachers to solve that problem. but. That being said though, just kind of running around for those five years, um, doing all those different things really gave me a valuable skill set that I never even like knew I had. And during that time, those five years, I never in my mind was like, yeah, I'm gonna go be a product manager one day. I'm gonna be go, or specifically a technical product manager one day. Like I never knew that that's what I was doing. Like that those were the skills I was building. And I also never knew how it related to the corporate world and the actual job title. So yeah but overall though that experience ended up being key because in this interview process not only did i have to code an api but i also had to know a lot of different business strategy things and just be able to think in a lot of different dynamic ways and i feel like working in a startup or having product experience really will help you kind of understand that or really just running a business it doesn't even have to be a startup per se but if you have any sort of entrepreneurial background or you've tried to run a company or you've owned a small business thing it puts you in a better position um, in terms of moving the product. The next thing I'll say is that I got a PMP certification um, in August of 2021. So yeah, uh, PMP, for those that don't know, is a project management professional certification. It is a very long and uh, rather challenging certification, about four hours long on the exam. We will talk about that again in some in some future content. I got, like I said, guys, I'm just coming back, getting the groove and making content again. So I've got so much stuff lined up for y'all. Cannot wait to get it out. That certification and studying for that and passing that, I think it helped get my resume pulled a lot more. Obviously, I can't really prove that. Like, I, I can't say that for sure it was the PMP that really got my my resume pulled as much as it did during this most recent job search, but honestly, I've never gotten as many calls for interviews as I did during this previous most recent job search. Now, that could have a lot to do with the fact that I had three years or more of software engineering experience, but at the same time, I wasn't applying for software engineering roles anymore. So this entire job search, I only applied for project and product management positions. And even with the three years of software engineering experience, um, I think that combined with PMP just got my resume pulled a lot. I got a lot of interviews this most recent um, job search. You also want to have some Scrum and Agile experience because it's so important to just the technical landscape in any sort of tech company that you know, just having absolutely no awareness or no understanding of Agile and Scrum is almost like not really acceptable. Knowing about Scrum and Agile, like pretty intimately, having experience in, in doing it yourself, I think those are very, 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 very critical. Also, if you're looking to go into a product role. 